Hello everyone, Pete Nelson here on the site of the Homestead Treehouse in Montana, outside of Whitefish, beautiful part of the world. Well, we are in the midst of building, I'm not even kidding, I mean, I know you're gonna go, wait, what, really? The biggest treehouse we've ever done. Bandera in Texas, 2,400 square feet. This one, 2,500 square feet. And then not as many decks. So to be fair, there's more deck space on the Madera Treehouse, but this one has deck space too. I'm so proud of the guys. Kevin, a lot of them are here. There's a few people off on vacation right now, but it's phenomenal what they've done in such a short period of time. I'm always amazed. So come on and we'll have a look. Okay, so this is not yet framed, but what we have here is a covered entry and then foyer right to take all your snowy clothes off and then you go in another door you're in the kitchen right so this all gets framed up but then you come into what is a great room dining figured would be here living there windows everywhere there's the more private part of the house back here with bedrooms and bathrooms um, there's a stairway leading up to the master suite let's come this way this is uh this is the view, the big view. A nice little cliff off in the distance. And all of these are tamaracks or larch trees, people call them. So these are the these are those beautiful kind of fur needle type needles on these that turn yellow and then fall off in the winter. Really beautiful in the fall, which is coming quickly. In fact, that's part of the fun of this. It's like, oh man, last year we were building a tree house just, you know, as the crow flies maybe half a mile from here and we got caught in an early snowstorm and it was a disaster. So this year, you know, hopefully we're dried in by mid-October. Windows are on their way, but um, yeah, <laughs> always exciting. But these guys have it, they, they're gonna crush it, I know it. So let's go tour the rest of the downstairs and then we'll go upstairs to the master suite in a moment. Come on. Okay, so watch your step, plywood everywhere, rafters. Here we are in sort of the sitting room, part of the living room. Big windows everywhere so you can look out and see these beautiful tamarack trees. Very peaceful spot. There is a big machine over there knocking into the, the rock to get the power and water here. So it seems like he's taking a lunch break. That's good. A little more airy, a lot of room up above. Now this will be open framing here. When you get back into this part of the living room, you know, nine foot ceilings, which are nice. They feel good to me. If you come over this way, come on in guys. I don't want to hold you up. We're just doing a little tour. This is a covered deck outdoor. All this beautiful Western red cedar is our specialty. Salvaged, of course, you know. What's so important for me to let everybody know is this stuff is coming off the forest floor, having been cut many, many years ago. So we're not going up into the Claylock Forest on Vancouver Island and cutting old growth cedar. We are not, we would never do that in a million years. This is coming out of the forest floor, again, salvaged. It's just this beautiful wood that's great to use outside. It stands up to all the weather. It has this beautiful patina over time. So that's what a lot of our decks, railings, a lot of siding is off in that Western Red Cedar. Beautiful stuff and it lasts, very important. So before we go tour the rest of the treehouse, let's go down below because speaking of the exterior, this is a very different treehouse than what we've been building. A lot of posts, which are important up here. Okay, come on. Posts for sure, but we've got some trees involved. This is important. Our tamarack trees. They're doing some heavy duty work here. Absolutely. But with the treehouse of this size, we used all the trees we possibly could but ended up making it extra strong by putting heavy duty steel posts into the ground. What I have in the middle here is the utilities bunker. You know, here where it gets literally 40 degrees below zero, we've got all of our utilities coming into this. We're using it as a structural element too, but a lot of concrete, 28 yards of concrete, which is a lot of concrete, especially for a tree house, went into this project. So. Utilities, water, power, and then all the black water going out from the bathrooms all go into this core. And then, you know, we've got our trees interspersed, but look at, I mean, 
six inch heavy wall steel pipe galvanized, which, you know, helps it last a good long time. Not your typical treehouse part of uh, construction and yet an important part too. And the guys just did an amazing job pouring all this. I mean, there was a lot of concrete work. Let me take you up to one in particular, this one in the corner. These, you know, help stabilize things. This is a, a grout that, you know, this all stood up off of the, the poured concrete a bit. And then that high strength grout squeezed in there. And again, with the snow load in Montana, you really need to make sure that this thing is gonna stay up in the air. So yeah, we could, could well, let's just pretend they're trees, galvanized trees. How about that? Come on, back into the bedrooming. Come through here. These will be stairs. There's a hallway to the right where we've got two bedrooms. One here. Let's go in because there's a fun little walk. You know, we'll see how the beds lay out, but we've got room for two, maybe bunk beds on one side. There's a little loft up top. You know, kids can crawl up there or adults alike, no matter. But a nice little space. You can't really stand up there, but it's a cute little spot. Extra room. There'll be a shared bathroom between the two bedrooms. You know, your classic layout. Five feet between walls, meaning you can put a five foot tub. Tub shower combination in the back with its own window, of course. And all you need in your little shared bathroom. Second bedroom here, slightly smaller. But, you know, a little closet for that. They've got the same loft, a little bit bigger loft in this case. It stretches over a bit. You could actually put a few beds up there, too. Taking advantage of every square foot. That's what we do in a treehouse. I mean, they're not typically 2,500 square feet, so, you know, you have to make every square foot count. In this case, yeah, it's, well, Texas size in Montana, or Montana size. Okay, let's go upstairs. Those are your okay, here we are at the um, bedroom sanctum. Tall ceilings, albeit I will flatten it out a little bit. I don't love when the ceiling goes up to a point like that. It just kind of makes me, I don't know, gives me a little discomfort maybe. As I will be discomforted by standing out here on their deck, this is going to be covered. It's going to be strong, but right now it's just a little half inch sheet of plywood and bouncy and... Ooh! My legs are a little light. <laughs> it's hairy up here. I mean, it is 40 feet. I mean, I'm just gonna guess. Yeah, probably 40 feet. It's as high as we've ever really been, I think, up on the top floor of a treehouse. Not kidding, this is seriously high. Okay, well, you know, I'm a treehouse guy. I should be okay with this, but fact is, it makes me a little nervous. So why don't I come back in and I'll show you the rest of the main <laughs> bedroom. King size bed against the north wall. We've got room for yoga, hanging out, quiet space in what would probably be a, a very busy household. Back here, we've got master bath, large, good light coming in. Then we've got walk-in closet, big walk-in closet. And then we've got two separate, smaller closets back here. All the luxuries that you might expect in a Nelson treehouse on steroids, because <laughs> this is on steroids. I drew this here just a few months ago and it amazes me because in Montana, no permits. We engineer everything, but you can come ahead and you know what usually stops us is the process of going through the building permit and getting that. Well here, you know, we get the engineering done, of course, which is critical, making sure that the beams are the right size and the footings are the right size, etc. but then when you get that figured out, you just find out when the crew can be there and you go. You know, these big, I should say steep 1612, and by 1612, I mean for every 12 inches out, 16 inches down, or every 12 feet out, 16 feet down. That's the slope of the roof. So that'll allow all the snow in these tough winters here in Montana to just slide right off. Yeah, that's the idea is you wanna engineer these things so that they'll stay up when they've got, a, you know, 10 feet of snow in the winter time. Really fun to see this going as quickly and as beefy as it is, it's just really a delight. I literally sit in my chair and draw this stuff. And then when I come out here and see that it's all going together so smoothly with Kevin 
Kevin Kepler, our lead builder, is amazing. And he has his merry band of builders with him and they are crushing it. So proud. So thanks for coming along at this stage. We've got a couple months left here. We're all chasing this tough winter. I know they'll make it. So thanks for coming along. <laughs>